over to a DEA lab that tests the chemical composition of the drugs that they seize. We can't tell you where it is and we can't film the exteriors. Uh, they d haven't told us where the lab is, so we're going to meet them in front of a convenience store. They're going to take us to the lab and once we're inside, we can turn the cameras back on. What you're looking at is a typical example of what a uh, typical seizure, seizure from south of the border would look like of methamphetamine. Now take this a, is the ground up crystals. This is the ground up crystals that you saw, okay. yes. Then I would take those, put them on the instrument. Close the instrument down on top of it. And this pattern is indicative of methamphetamine from my expertise, that's what it is. And based on the, the instrument's computations, this sample was 98.9% pure. Wow, that's very pure. That is very pure, yes. Is that something you come across often? Um, we're seeing it a lot more often, yes. It used to be that we would get it uh, mixed in with other things, but a lot of the stuff coming in from south of the border is very pure. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon to see it at 99, 98% purity with nothing else in there. You have to understand the dynamics of methamphetamine. Predominantly, it was a drug that was produced and, and, and abused on the west coast of the United States. And recently, uh, and again, very recently, say in the last uh, three, to, three to five years, we've seen a, a, rapid, uh, a rapid transit of the drug uh, heading east to the point where no part of the United States is exempt from, uh, from the scourge of, of methamphetamine use and abuse. California has been called the meth manufacturing capital of the world. As commander of the Fresno Meth Task Force in Central California's farm country, Bob Pennell tracks down meth super labs. These are labs that can make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of meth in one cooking cycle. He took us to a former lab site, a small house. Uh, they've been manufacturing methamphetamine here for, for quite a while. Uh, they're using the inside of the house to manufacture meth. Uh, the laboratory was boxed up and it was put in a uh, closet and it was uh, sealed with towels at the bottom so no odors could get out. And then when they're ready to manufacture, what they'll do is they'll go remove everything out of the closet, they'll bring it into the living room, they'll start setting up their operation. Is this sort of typical of what you come across? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of these uh, older homes have basements and these guys love to utilize basements. That's uh, real important to them, you know, that they have uh, seclusion like that. They want to cook in a basement out in the middle of a citrus grove at three in the morning. And you tell me how you're going to find them. When you turn around and you look at this area out here and there's one patrol deputy for hundreds and hundreds of square miles, see that's what they want. And just as cocaine is made in Colombia because traffickers have easy access to the raw ingredient coca leaves, methamphetamine was made in California because traffickers had easy access to pseudoephedrine and ephedrine, the active ingredients found in common cold and allergy medications. A simple chemical reaction transforms a pound of pseudoephedrine into a pound of pure D-methamphetamine. Bob took us to a dump site where traffickers used to trash their pseudoephedrine bottles. If you look around, uh, this is a dump site from years ago, and we had these dump sites everywhere. As you went down the road, you could find bottles like this everywhere, all over the place. Where are these guys getting their, their supplies of pseudo from? Whoever was ordering these pills, whoever was shipping them here, they wanted no identifiers on the bottles at all. So all of a sudden, these show up, and we started seeing thousands of these bottles. Pseudoephedrine is made in China and India, and then it's imported to the U.S. In the 90s, the U.S. government tried to crack down on meth production by tightening the rules for importing pseudo, but that didn't stop the problem. Well, in the last five or six years, of course, um, we saw that there was a, an amazing amount of pseudoephedrine being uh, shipped to Canada. And from Canada, the pseudo was smuggled across the U.S. border to California's meth super labs. It was only after the U.S. pressured Canada to begin its own crackdown on pseudo-imports that meth production in California started to go down. The Canadians did a phenomenal job in placing uh, restrictions on the, on the legal importation of pseudoephedrine and ephedrine into Canada. That resulted in the balloon effect that people keep talking about. Uh, and it was easy to predict that the balloon was going to moved in the direction of Mexico. The good news is we have essentially driven the primary manufacturing of, coca of, uh, of methamphetamine 
into Mexico. Are you seeing less of the supply available? Is it less available today? Well, certainly that would be, that would be the bad news. America's meth supply remained undiminished. All the traffickers had to do was move their meth labs from California to Mexico, where getting pseudoephedrine was not a problem. It is 8 o'clock in the morning in Guadalajara, Mexico, and we are supposed to meet a DEA agent at 8.30. Uh, all we know is that he's arriving in a blue suburban. We're supposed to meet him outside. We are riding around with DEA agents here in Guadalajara, Mexico in an armored SUV that can withstand rounds from an AK-47. Hear that? This is the industrial part of Guadalajara. There are a lot of manufacturing centers, and behind me there, you can see a number of chemical plants as well. Back in January, the Mexican authorities responded to a call about a possible break-in at this site. They came here, smelled some fumes, and alerted the DEA who came out here and found that this was a huge super lab operation manufacturing methamphetamine. Luis. Hello. So this is the nice Adam and Mitch. Nice when the DEA arrived here back in January, they found that this was quite possibly the largest meth super lab in the entire world. This yes. was huge. Yes, very, very big. Do you know, like uh, one uh, thousand of kilos for each time they work in the cookers, in the big, big cookers. So when you first came to this site, it was very toxic? Yes. It's still very toxic, this place. You can, you can smell. still smell it. Yes. You can smell Are we yeah. safe here? Yes. <laughs> We're I okay? Think. I think. What are you smelling? Well, you know, like either. Ether. Ether. Like ether. Smell of ether. So the pressure cookers are, it's, it's like a new innovation to allow them to cook yes. a lot more meth at any given time. Yes. Faster. That are quite. Oh, let me tell you something. We find this place because one man, I think he come inside for for thief or something. One robbery. He is scared. Wait, so some guy broke in here yes, to try to steal something? To try to steal something. <laughs> I, when he see he saw all the stuffs, he ran away and scared. So a small time crook yes. alerted the police to a big time yes. illegal operation. This is the way. We know that. The government of Mexico has taken steps to severely limit the import of pseudoephedrine and ephedrine from China and India. And they did this by calculating what they believe is the legitimate need Mexicans have for cough medicines and allergy medications that use pseudoephedrine and ephedrine. After the raid on this lab, the DEA and Mexican officials began raiding other sites around Guadalajara, finding not only meth, but the bodies of traffickers. And as the heat came on, the traffickers began turning on one another. The Mexican government claims it's doing all it can to stop the production of meth in Mexico, in part by limiting how much pseudoephedrine and ephedrine can be legally imported into the country. But it also adds that that won't reduce the supply of meth around the world, because meth production will just move to wherever pseudoephedrine and ephedrine can be imported. Bottom line is, as long as there's a market, there's going to be somebody trying to take advantage of that. And as we get better and better with uh, policing it, with uh, putting controls on the chemicals, the more we're going to see the balloon effect. All of my offices have been given strict guidelines on what they have to do to prepare themselves in those other countries in South America because methamphetamine is coming. It's just a matter of time.